Okay. As the second negative constructive speaker, I will be going through the workability problems and the disadvantages of legalizing euthanasia in California. Uh, one of the first workability disadvantages is that uh, a, a policy of euthanasia is not going to is not going to completely alleviate suffering. It doesn't. Euthanasia does not guarantee a peaceful, a peaceful, just fading away, a peaceful, dignified death. Um, in, Ho in Holland, where, euthanasia, where uh, physician-assisted suicide has been legalized for several years now, 16% uh, of 16% of cases after which the patient is given lethal drugs, the uh, suicide does not go as planned either, uh, and several various results can happen as a result. Um, the patient can either experience extreme vomiting, uh, the patient can either go into a coma after which they from which after which they are supposed to die, but instead they later awaken from the coma after they after the bodies process the drugs. Uh, patients can also lie uh, patients can also lie awake, breathing shallowly for hours upon for hours and hours um, until they die. And in some cases, uh, um, decerebration can happen, which is a case in which the in case in which the brain is dead, but the body is still breathing. Um, they essentially, rather than dying, uh, the drug essentially turns them into a vegetable. Um, some of the disadvantages. Some of the disadvantages I'm going to talk about are um, probably some of the ones more on the periphery that aren't um, usually what people think of when they think about the disadvantages to a euthanasia policy. Uh, my first one is that physician-assisted suicide is discriminatory against the poor. Um, and, this is a, and this is because the poor uh, don't have access to and can't afford um, be the better types of pain relief and medical care, and so they're more likely uh, to contract, uh, to not be able to fight off uh, terminal illnesses early, and so do, and so go into a terminal stage of potentially terminal illnesses, fight them off early, and go into a stage a stage after which they can't be helped. Also, they <coughs> also they won't have access to or be able to afford um, better pain relief, and so and so will be more open to the option of euthanasia. Um, to back me up on this, uh, there was an article written by Felicia Cohn and Joanne Lin, both, uh, both um, professors of medicine. Uh, vulnerable people, practical, re practical rejoinders to claims in favor of assisted suicide, the case against assisted suicide for the right to end of life care. Um, quotes, from this quotes from this article include, the poor are particularly vulnerable to the effects of poor health care resources and the attendant constraints on medical decision making. For many, no reasonably desirable choices exist. Then, physician-assisted suicide may not merely be a choice, but one option among others. Rather, it may become a coercive offer. Uh, what they're saying here is that because uh, they can't afford the other options that are, the, that are there, such as uh, better pain relief, uh, they can't. Uh, uh, the cheaper option, the cheaper option of euthanasia, is uh, their only option. Uh, another quote is: "Those without such resources may have to choose, may not have the choice among recommended services. They either they either face going, they either face bankrupting their families or going without much needed healthcare altogether." And I think that one's quite self-explanatory. Uh, the next disadvantage of a policy of physician-assisted suicide is that it um, damages uh, the public's perception of doctors and the entire uh, <coughs> the entire uh, profession of medicine. Uh, a quote from "Why Doctors Must Not Kill" by Leon Cass: Consider first the damaging consequences for the doctor-patient relationship. Patients trust in doctors' wholehearted devotion to their patients' best interests, 
It will be hard to sustain once doctors are licensed to kill. And I believe, and <coughs> what this article is trying to say is that once doctors have the option to kill, the option to suggest their patients uh, without any, without any like legal, um, not only legal consequences, that they kill themselves. It's something that's very damaging to the patient's morale about their public health, about their health, and the trust that they have in their doctors. The, a doctor is supposed to be someone who does their absolute best to make sure that you get better, or that if you can't, or that if you can't get better, that they help you in whatever, in whatever way they can. And ending and ending one's and ending someone's life is something that the majority of people, and thus the majority of patients that would go to doctors, don't consider to be in their best interests. Uh, my final uh, my final argument for why for um, uh, my final disadvantage for policy euthanasia is that. Um, the policy is that euthanasia creates uh, what's called a slippery slope. Um, after which, that if you legalize suicide, if you legalize physicians to suicide for a very small group of people, then eventually that group, uh, the restrictions become looser and that group becomes larger. Um, and this has already and there's already evidence of this happening in Holland, uh, where again, where I say that physician has uh, where physician assisted suicide has been legal for several years now. Um, courts extend. The courts uh, at first were fairly strict on who could uh, receive legal drugs, um, terminal patients and such, uh, suffering from uh, terminal illnesses. But these, but what, but this eventually was extended to uh, also patients who were suffering from mental illnesses, on the basis that uh, that their mental suffering was perceived as unbearable by them as well. And eventually, uh, the, um, the courts uh, allowed a 50-year-old woman with no physical illnesses to receive legal drugs um, after the death of her two sons on the basis that her, theory, on the basis that her uh, mental suffering was unbearable. You gotta cut you off here.